Okay, welcome everyone. This is the, the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. I'm going to start sharing my screen and let's look at our agenda. First, we're going to review the review the agenda and the topics on the agenda. Be sure that we've got all the topics and then we'll work through the topics. So you should see my screen with at the top the November 7th agenda and we'll, we'll spend some time reviewing open action items. Then we'd like to talk about adopt open JDK as the base JDK for Jenkins image, images instead of open JDK. Uh, adding adopt open JDK J9 as a new image for Jenkins. Then we'll talk status on the Windows installer. Uh, we had a plan to talk about Hacktoberfest results, but Oleg is out today on vacation, so we'll defer this one two weeks. And then Natasha added the plugin installation manager tool as a topic for this agenda. Are there any other agenda items that people would like to add before we start working through the agenda? Okay, I'll take silence to mean, mean that we can proceed then. So let's look at open action items. Uh, on the Mark is embarrassed, we've got, I still have to open the Jen Jenkins enhancement proposal for Docker operating system support and platform selection rules. The issue there is we really need as a project, a set of well-defined criteria we use to decide when we will add a new Docker image, in particular because they are sticky. Once we add them, they tend to remain forever. And as an example, the Alpine non-support with Java 11 has been an interesting one with a sticky image. Um, Oleg has the action item to open a JEP for Windows support policy. Um, Alex, you've got the action item on the Windows installer code signing with Olivier Vernin. Anything you want to report there? Um, the ticket for, uh, on the CDF is uh, moving forward. Um, they, they created a new legal uh, entity in order to have an entity that they can purchase the code signing certificates under. So. That's where we're at. They've established that LLC. And now we're just waiting to see what the process will be for getting the code signing certificate done. Great. Yeah, that's that is that is wonderful progress there. That was the sticking point for us, getting that code signing certificate. And as noted here, we also need that for the Jenkins release automation project that Olivier is leading. Thank you. All right, so in terms of next item, adopt OpenJDK as the base JDK for Jenkins images. So the, the thinking here was that adopt has better platform support, has, has active platform support for some interesting platforms that we might need. And the, the question was, what do we need to do next? So we need an integrate, we, well, fundamentally we need a pull request which proposes this, right? And I have not seen one yet um, to propose change that change from adopt from Open JDK to adopt Open JDK. Uh, is there anybody on the call who is intending to take the lead on creating that pull request? Are are we talking across the board, or are we just starting with the, the uh, master images? Um, because there are also the, the Docker slave, the Docker JNLP slave, and the Docker SSH slave. Ah, um, that are images we provide as well. That's a, that's a good question. So it would need pull requests, you said, for master, for the Docker slave, JNLP slave, and isn't there an image that is the basis for those two? That's Docker slave. Oh, okay. So then it's SSH. What's, what's the third? Docker what's, SSH slave. Thank you. Docker SSH slave. All right, so there's, it's not singular pull request, it's multiple, we'll need several pull requests. I think, uh, Mark, um, for right now, um, due to adopts limited support of like base images, um, right now, at least, you know, we talked about in the last call that I'm working with the, the adopt team to um, update their testing so they can, do a PR to the official Docker library to add 
of uh, support for a lot more, um, you know, bases like CentOS, um, Debian Stretch, uh, Buster, and all that good stuff. Um, right now, I think they only have Ubuntu 1804, and I'm blanking on the other one. Um, maybe UBI. I think they have official ones. Um, I think starting off with a small PR would be a good idea. Kind of like a, pr a proof concept. So maybe focusing on that master. Uh, and seeing how we get, you know, some reception and see how it goes be a good idea. Okay, well, and so my thought was that as I've looked at the Jenkins Docker image, it seems to have a base operating system. Oh, no, that's right. It does use a, it uses something provided by OpenJDK. Good. Okay, so Jim, your point is that since Adopt doesn't have some of those other platforms, that would be a really significant change. Thanks. Good point. Okay. Yeah, and that's that's that was my like first kind of idea was just target uh, one of the bases they do have. Um, I know they have, and Jordan and I've been using um, the Ubuntu 1804 base for Adopt on S390, uh, and we haven't hit any issues. Is that been actually really really stable and uh, working really well? And plugin support surprisingly hasn't been an issue either. Um, I know that's something we talked about last time, like, oh, well, you know, do we know if all the plugins, you know, work on S390 or is there going to be any bugs? Um, but we haven't hit any. Um, and we're using like Ansible, Docker, and a couple other major, I th at least I think major plugins. Um, Great. Yeah, but I think, I think targeting just uh, the master or just a uh, kind of proof of concept, uh, you know, showing, hey, here would be the, here's how we would do the switch over to adopt would be a good idea. And then I'm going to continue uh, putting a little more pressure on the adopt team to support and get that PR underway uh, to get the needed base images so that we can, you know, convert all our images over to adopt. Okay, good. But by, by the way, I landed a PR recently with the adopt team for nano server images. Sweet. Um, I don't know. I don't know what their their uh, how they're going to roll that into an official rather than a non-official mm -hmm. um, because the the build environment and stuff that they have is all Linux based. Um, but, yeah. So I, I may do another PR to get GitHub Actions involved because um, they have Docker on one, the Windows agents for GitHub Actions. Oh, that's awesome! I didn't know about that. Um, I can I can reach back out to them. I was on a talk. I think the other week with them, um, and I know they just got more Linux server capacity. Um, so that's why they're more open to supporting many more base images. But I didn't hear anything about Windows. I know they do Windows, I think, core, not nano. Um, so it would be interesting to see if they would be able to support nano. Yeah, it's, it's really easy to build the nano images if you can support Windows images. But from my understanding, okay there's someone who is actually like building them manually and pushing them to Docker Hub. But um, yeah, yeah so I can believe that for those. Yeah, an automated version would be better. Okay, um, that, that's something I, I have not touched in my experience with Docker, uh, working with Windows images, it's always been Linux. Um, I would love to pick your brain a little bit more on that because um, whether you do a PR or I kind of prod in, internally, uh, with the adopt team, uh, we should be able to get that through. So, cool, sounds good. Alex, it seems like the Windows Nano server images would be very interesting for the agent, for me at least, for the agent side, for the Docker slave or the Docker yeah. SSH slave. Yeah, definitely, they are much smaller. Um, like the the normal image is like two point something gig for a server core, and the Nano server image is like. 500 bag, so it is a pretty significant savings in space Excellent. and download time. Would you be willing to provide, you can do it after the meeting, provide a link to the PR so that I could embed it into the meeting notes, Alex? Yeah, I'll do that. Thank you. Okay, are there other items? So Alpine support status, um, Jim, I think you had some information on this one that I didn't capture in the notes. Could you tell us what is Adopt Open JDK's position with regard to Alpine? I think you described it last meeting and I didn't capture it. 
Yeah, so the digging through, and I, I maybe I'll get the links for you guys too. Digging through the last official PR um, that OpenJDK opened against Docker Library, uh, which Docker Library, for those who don't know, is the official uh, way to add official images to Docker Hub. Um, they had Alpine um, supported, and if you look at their unofficial images, there's a lot of Alpine um, images out there. But um, the official Docker uh, library uh, staff was a little concerned with how they were implementing Alpine since uh, Alpine uses Muscle versus libgc. Um, you know, pretty much everyone uses libgc on you know their base images except Alpine. Uh, and the problem was the adopt team, all they did was disable muscle and then pull down libgc and put it on top of Alpine and then just, you know, make adopt, you know, work on top of that. So they were a little concerned about having that happen. They were, they were looking more for like official support of muscle uh, with adopt on top. Um, so I don't, I, I talked to the devs. Uh, for the DOP team, and they look like they're going to try Alpine again um, in the official PR, and I'm hoping it goes through because I, th I think they've done a lot more testing, a lot more vetting, um, but my concern is that the official Docker library staff are still going to say no on that, which would be a big loss, at least for, I, I like Alpine, at least. And I know some of the community likes Alpine, too. Um, so they, 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 the DOP team definitely wants to support it, but I don't know whether it'll be blocked by the official uh, Docker library staff. So, okay. Are there open JDK images for Alpine? I thought I saw them. Yeah, there are, but uh, the open, oh yeah, open JDK. Um, but how are they implementing it is my question. So my, That's a good question. I don't know. My recollection was that there is an, an open JDK image for, for, an Alpine Open JDK image for Java 8, but if I recall correctly, not for Java 11, and that the Open JDK project bluntly declared that they would not support Muscle. That was my my. That's uh, the poor. So Mark's poor recollection. I'll double check. I can do some. I think that that so that Open JDK refused to support uh, Alpine with Java 11. And I think there's a, a long thread on it, but it does support Java 8. It's just, if it only supports Java 8 and Java 8 is approaching an eventual end of life, um, it feels like Java 11 non-support makes Alpine, at least to me, less interesting. Yeah, it, de it definitely does. Getting to Java 11 would be really nice for everything. Um, but Alex, I, th I think you definitely bring up a good point. If Adopt got Alpine through to the official image, maybe they did it in some way that pleased the Docker staff. Um, it'd be interesting to kind of dive a little deeper into that and see how they actually got it supported. Um, at least from my understanding was that the Docker library staff didn't want to do it because they thought it was not, I guess, uh, well, 100% okay with, you know, switching out the C compiler on top. Um, but I mean, if OpenJDK got it through, then I don't see why Adopt wouldn't be able to. Great. All right, so and we don't yet have pull requests on it, so I'm going to delete those two items. Any other items with regard to Adopt OpenJDK as the base JDK? Okay, and let's talk about J9. Okay, so Jim, could you give us, just remind everybody, what is Open J9? And uh, you can keep it short and simple, but op tell us what Open J9 is, and then we'll get into the d details. So Open J9 is a kind of different implementation of Hotspot. Uh, you know, while Hotspot being more of Oracle's implementation, uh, J9 has a different approach. It was originally, I think, made by IBM, but then since open sourced it. Um, so the advantages, at least from what I've seen, is a huge, uh, a huge ramp up, a huge speed boost and ramp up. So uh, OpenJ9 has a much um, 
faster time ramping up uh, to, I guess, full capacity uh, or full or peak performance, if you want to say that. Um, and then we had Irwin on the call last time, and he was talking about how um, Hotspot uh, usually edges out – or, sorry, uh, OpenJ9 usually edges out Hotspot in performance. There's just a couple of edge cases where Hotspot um, – you know, you might you might want to go with hotspot uh, for you know certain use cases. I forget what he said. Um, I'm blanking here, Mark. Uh, I don't know if you remember That's, what. Irwin no, I, I I don't remember. But you <laughs> you you gave a great summary. That's wonderful. So yeah. thank you very much. And we've got a pull request open. We've actually got two pull requests open. I think the the top one listed here, 890 is more active right now and what we need right now as far as i can tell is more review and feedback um, one of the things i'd thought of is i think i'm in a i'm at a good point personally where i could take the pull request and apply it to my tooling and see what breaks uh, my tooling involves windows agents many different linux agents um, all hosted off of a docker image on on linux and so with that tooling that should give us a little bit more evaluation. Hey, what are are there any surprises in running OpenJ9? I was I, when I was doing my PR for um, Adopt for Nano Server Images, I did find that the OpenJ9 um, crashed when it was when I was trying to run a simple like Java EXE dash V for version. Um, I haven't reported it to anyone because I just didn't have time yet, but um, that shouldn't impact. Uh, for master because we don't have um, Windows master images, but just an FYI. Okay, so, and I'm expecting, I was expecting um, all sorts of problems just related to surprises around garbage collection or around the startup sequencing because Jenkins is huge, right? There's an awful lot of Java code in Jenkins. so. So for me, the, I assume we're going to see some interesting failures as we run it at larger scale. Yeah, Mark, I would, I would love to hear about that if you guys do run into issues. Because um, I, I can definitely, uh, you know, kind of ask, you know, ask the internal OpenJ9 team and see what they're doing. I know they do a lot of stress tests. Um, that's actually part of the test we're actually pulling in for the adopt images, we're actually running through our the OpenJ9 test suite because um, you know we can use it for non OpenJ9 things too. It's just a bunch of Java tests, um, so it'll be interesting to see the results over there. Um, but from Jordan's eye implementation of it, it was I mentioned this last time to you, Mark, but it was kind of funny. We we spun up Hotspot on S390, and it took like a good amount of time for the Jenkins master to come up and get you know get to that web. Uh, the web UI. <laughs> when I did it with uh, OpenJ9, it was instantaneous, which was really nice to see uh, and interesting to see. Um, I actually thought I did the OpenJ9 first and thought that was like the normal J uh, Jenkins kind of startup time. And then I did a uh, hotspot. I was like, oh, did I break something? You know, is it not working on S390? Uh, it, it, but it just took a little extra time with hotspot, which was interesting to see. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks for, thanks for doing that. And is that, that your notes on it running on OpenJ9, could you post those also to that pull request, that 890 pull request? Are you using that Docker image as your test on S390? Um, I, don't, I don't think I am. What I did, um, and there's probably some performance tweaks. I noticed they, they had a couple of Java flags. Uh, what Jordan and I did uh, was we just actually pulled down the the master image um, for Jenkins and then just swapped out the from up top. So we were probably running open, you know, it, running on OpenJ9, but um, we're probably not optimized for anything like that. So um, oh, we, even yeah, it would be even more interesting to see if we can fine tune it even more. Um, I'm not a Java wizard by any means. Um, I'll leave that to the OpenJ9 team that adopts, but. Great, well, yeah, because I know that 890 definitely has some, what looked to me like ahead of time compile, or maybe it's not ahead of time, but some caching operations where they invoke something in order to get it pre-cached into the Docker image. 
Mm -hmm. I, so I think that may be even more interesting. Great. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll uh, ping that thread and see if we can move it along. I'll be interested okay. to see on that PR. Well, that's, that's very encouraging then. Anything else on Adopt OpenJ9? I had a, um, so Jim, you, you, you have contact with people internally that work on the OpenJ9 team? Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, Alex. I'm over at IBM, Jordan and I. Um, so I, the last call I was on with the Adopt team, we pulled in a couple of people from the Adopt internal team and a couple of people from the internal uh, OpenJ9 team. Yeah. Is, is there a place to file issues <clears throat> online? Uh, for OpenJ9 or Adopt? Uh, OpenJ9, the, for the, uh, the nano server crash that I saw, I was just wondering if I could report that somewhere. Um, I don't, I haven't, I haven't bugged, I haven't looked around on the GitHub. Uh, I was being mostly on just the uh, uh, adopt GitHub. Um, I can okay, ask I'll, I'll and take a report look. back to you. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks. So Jim, I'm going to put an action item for you to, <clears throat> excuse me, find a location to report bugs, to report yep. the open J9 bugs. J9 we'll do. Great. Thanks. Any other topics on open, J on open JDK or adopt open JDK, open J9 as an additional image for uh, chickens? All right, next topic then, Windows installer. Alex. Um, so the Windows installer is currently being built on the release instance that Olivier has set up. Um, so that flow is working. We just need the code signing certificate at this point, and then we can start releasing. So that'll be nice. So really the, the parts and pieces that you need except code signing are all functional, could could, can anyone grab those bits and run tests against them if they'd like? Um, I do have a build on ca.jenkins.io. Um, I will send the link to the latest artifact that people can look at. Thank you. Thanks very much. Anything else there, Alex, that you needed to report? Uh, no, that's all right now. Okay. All right. The next topic, I actually want to talk to Hacktoberfest results briefly, just to let everybody know we had an amazing Hacktoberfest. The, the month of October is a sponsored month where DigitalOcean and GitHub create this promotional event called Hacktoberfest, encouraging people to contribute to open source projects. We had by the midpoint of the month, we had over 50 new contributors and 50 new pull requests uh, coming in. Really, really great result. Um, Oleg will schedule a retrospective exercise so that we can see what we learned from it, what we need to do better and differently. Uh, one of the key things he noted was the amazing power of having newbie friendly or first time user friendly issues and in particular, having them as GitHub issues more than having them as issues in the Jenkins JIRA. Uh, because GitHub has provided some easy facilitation to find friendly issues, um, it, it's made me think, gee, maybe I want to shift some of the plugins that I maintain to be tracked there, to track their issues in GitHub rather than in, in the Jenkins JIRA. So it was very interesting results. I suspect he'll be with us in two weeks and we can talk about it then. Now, has Natasha joined us? Natasha, are you with us? Oh yes, there she is, I see her. So Natasha Stolpa has the plugin installation manager tool. Natasha, you wanna give us a status report? Yeah, sure. So um, after our conversation two weeks ago, I tried doing uh, like the first official release, but uh, it I got like an error. And so like it basically I couldn't, uh deploy the i guess like the artifact 
So we re-looked at some of like the permissions, like the permissions files. And I think there were some like maybe naming discrepancies. So we fixed those. And then I tried doing it again yesterday and still I'm having some issues. So I was just gonna see if you guys had any ideas. And actually overnight, um, like Tim had replied back to me, but um, I, I don't know. I, um, so one of the things that we had done uh, over the summer was like, uh, we had renamed one of the jar files after, um, I guess like using Maven. And I, I think I'm like a little bit confused about, um, so I think that had to do with like, the order in which uh, things got sent to Artifactory or, or something. I can't remember exactly why we did the renaming, um, but uh, I know that like without it, that had caused problems. But um, yeah, I don't know. So I don't know if you guys have any ideas or if that made any sense. The Maven release process is always like a black box to me. I never know why it's going wrong. <laughs> um, so if we're still having problems, maybe we can try looping in someone like Jake Lick, um, Jesse. Um, okay. Or, or something, because he's like an expert at everything like that. So. Okay. Okay. He might be a good one to ask, maybe ask on the dev mailing list. Okay. Um, and see um, if anybody has any input there. Usually, usually Daniel Beck and Oleg are able to to help with help us diagnose those kind of things. But yeah, if we had to, we could certainly appeal to Jesse. I'm I'm hesitant to pull him in any any earlier than absolutely necessary. Yeah, I would say okay. post the dev mailing list. Um, right. Then people, you know, when when they if they have cycles, they can respond instead of. You know, going directly to them for now. Okay. And now, um, Natasha, you said Tim, and I assume that was Tim Jacome? Yeah, correct. Okay, great. Yeah, so the dev mailing list feels like that was the place that I had to go to anyway when I had really I had problems doing release. And in my case, the problems were related to, to getting the right, right bits and pieces into the file system locally and getting the right bits and pieces permission granted on the remote side. Okay. Thanks. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Uh, anything else that you wanted to report there, Natasha? Uh, no, I think that's it. All right. So I think the action item still stands then that the goal, Natasha, is to get plugin installation manager 1.0 released. Yep. And thanks. Any other topics that we need to cover today before we, we conclude our meeting? Hey, Mark, I, I, I had uh, one thing I wanted to bring up that we kind of briefly mentioned last talk um, was, and I thought it was interesting, or at least you, I think, I thought you thought it was interesting, uh, was we were talking about reclaiming the official Docker um, image from the Docker library, the official Jenkins one. Um, and the interesting part, I know you guys had some trouble in the past with them uh, in terms of um, availability and like, you know, quickly pushing out images when you guys need it. But the one thing I think you found interesting was their access, their build pipeline, which has access to pretty much every single arch they support. So whether it's ARM, Power, S390, um, x86, uh, which could be helpful for us when we start you know, say we do do the switch to adopt and we get on something that has support for many different architectures, uh, would it be worthwhile at least trying to reclaim that uh, and utilizing some of their resources? And then one of the things we also talked about was um, kind of modeling it after how adopt does it, where adopt has their unofficial repository, which they put out nightly builds, they push out um, you know, pretty much anything to, and everything to their night, uh, unofficial Docker Hub repository. But then they push out uh, long-term support, major releases to their official one. So we're not swamping the uh, Docker uh, library uh, staff, but uh, we're just 
pushing out our best images over there. Um, I, I just thought that was an interesting point and uh, something that doesn't need to happen now or anytime soon. Just something uh, to get the ball rolling and get people's thoughts on. Yeah, so the, the hardware access thing for me is is interesting. That's that's does does the Docker official image actually have access, for instance, to S three ninety? Yes, they do. Um, I once tried to ask how they have it, uh, and I still need to trace it down. Not that it's a security concern or anything like that. I'm sure we gave it to them once upon a time, but uh, yeah, they have access to power in S three ninety. The one um, negative thing is they do not have Windows auto build. Really interesting. Yeah, and there's a there's a question in a forum from 2017 that they said it's in their roadmap, but there's been no update for a year and a half. <laughs> yeah, that that would put a damper on some of the stuff we do. But that's interesting. How does how do official images actually go out then for Windows if it's not automated? Does someone manually have to go do it? Well, I'm pretty sure that um, like Windows, they they have their own um, hub instance, right? They don't publish um, images to Docker Hub. They have their own servers that you pull from. Mm -hmm. um, and I, for the, like for the Maven images I did recently, I set up GitHub Actions for that. Um, and, but I'm not sure how other people do it. Yeah, because looking, just looking at Adopt, right, they have Windows Server Core uh, on, you know, support up on their official image. So that got through somehow. Um, I, I think they pushed those manually, but I'm not sure. Interesting. Uh, yeah, that, that's something to definitely track down. Uh, because I, I know the Docker library staff do a, a very thorough inspection. I would imagine they want to do a thorough inspection of the Windows images, but if they don't have something, that'd be interesting to where they test it or how they test it. Excellent. Thank you. Okay, so so Alex, did I capture that correctly? The, as currently, as far as you know, Docker official images don't have an uh, auto build, whereas these other architectures like S three ninety ARM and Power do. Uh, but you noted that GitHub Ac GitHub Actions delivers Windows images. Can GitHub Actions deliver on ARM, Power, or S three ninety? I mean, do we have do we do we consider some hybrid or um, that I'm not sure. Um, I haven't, I, when you specify the OS in a GitHub action, I don't think there's a place to specify architecture, but I'll have to look again. Ah, okay. The, the other suggestion that we use internally and then a lot of open source communities I've been working with has been Travis uh, for builds at least, where um, they support ARM. Um, hmm, I think they support ARM. Uh, it might be in their beta, uh, same thing with power, they, they support in beta. And then I think just recently S390 got into their public beta. Um, so that'd be interesting to see if we could possibly use the Travis public images or public uh, resources to build some of our images. Okay. I don't know if they have Windows support. Uh, that'd be interesting. I think they do have Windows. They do, but I believe it's only Windows 2016. Um, mm. And so, and most people are, because of the huge increase in support in Windows Server 2019, have moved over to 2019. Interesting. Okay, so it's still roadblock there. Well, at least for me, I'm very interested in Windows Server 2019 because of the, the addition of Microsoft supported OpenSSH server. It makes mm. managing Windows agents much much simpler for me thanks to that open SSH server I, I've they've they've given me much better results thanks to that ser new server that's added in Windows 10 1803 and later and in Windows Server 2019 Alex is the github actions is that um, the new like a uh, tool github just pushed out where like they have that the new tab up there that uh, uh, the only thing I've seen is like lets you like okay if I do a PR, it, it can automatically build something. Is that what you're talking about when you're talking about GitHub Actions? Yes. So okay. well, I, I and if you want to look at something I've I've done, if you look at um, C Sanchez's Maven repo, I recently okay. added a PR for um, 
building the Windows images on GitHub Actions. Okay, yeah, I, I'll definitely take a look at that because I haven't, I heard about GitHub Actions, but haven't done deep, that deep, sorry. So, Alex, would you be willing in a future meeting to possibly present a tutorial for us on GitHub Actions and what you'd seen, what, what, what your experience has been? Sure. I, I don't know that I'm an expert, but I've, I've banged my head against the wall a few times. <laughs> well, and, and for me, the banging your head against the wall makes you an expert by virtue of the banging. So I think uh, I've put it on next, next agenda. Alex review GitHub Actions. I think Oleg has also done some things. So it'd be a good, um, good topic to have next time that we meet with you presenting and you and Oleg together reviewing and discussing. Sure, sounds good. Okay. Any other topics we need to cover today? Uh, sorry, sorry to keep interjecting, Mark. Uh, is there? I know, I know you mentioned, and I think we talked about it last time too. Is getting access to S three ninety hardware and power. Um, also, I can, I can, I, we talked about this briefly last time. Is that Oregon State has a uh, power and S three ninety Jenkins build server you can do. But we also can get, or at least I can get you access to just a raw server uh, for at least S three ninety. I would have to go trace down some power people, but I've done it in the past uh, to get power access. Would that be helpful for you guys as we gonna venture off into the adopt and you being able to run your test cases and um, stuff like I, that? It it may. I would hold that at least for two weeks because okay. I think there are enough. I think we've got enough action items that will keep many of us occupied in the mm -hmm. amount that we can for at least two weeks keep that keep bringing it to us because it's a good reminder that okay. hey, there there are compute resources available that we may need to negotiate with the for me until we've been through some of these earlier action items yes okay s390 isn't <clears throat> excuse me isn't as interesting to me yet uh, because I haven't even done the basics on OpenJ9. I, you know, I, there okay. are things that I think I need to do with with equipment that I already have available that I'm conveniently using and that I'm quite experienced with. So when problems occur, I recognize them quickly as problems. Uh, the S390 stuff, I would see problems and they, they would be a complete surprise, I'm sure. Um, I'm, yeah. Okay. I, I see what you mean. Great. Thank you. Any other topics we should include? All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you very, very much for the session today. I propose that we, oh, rats, I may have forgotten to turn on the recording. Well, we'll hope that I have the recording on. Thanks, everybody. Thanks very much for your time today. Let's go ahead and end our session. Now I've got to stop sharing. Hey, I did record it. Thanks, everybody.